Well, how do there, chums? As you can see, I'm getting logged in to No Man's Sky. And behind me, you can see I've got the Steam DBs up. So I've got a little bit of news and I've got a little bit of something inside of No Man's Sky. So let's first of all jump on over into No Man's Sky and let's run on over to the Quicksilver Merchant, Johnny Five, as I call him, I guess, because the progress bar is completed. And the thing to notice here, people, it hasn't jumped back to the start and reset like it did when the decals ticked over into iteration. So it looks like they're on a little bit of a pause, even though that we know that there's new stuff queued up to go live any time now. But I'm going to be picking up this outlaw system decal. You can see by the picture here, it should be a purple skull next to a planet. Looks pretty cool, huh? However, over on the image to the left, you, you'll see there that it's it's not. It's the Universal Heartbeat decal. So I want to see whether it's busted. So I'm going to jump on over to my freighter and we're going to try sticking this decal on a wall in said freighter. I guess we are. So we've got the decal. We're going to see if it's got a problem with it. That's the first thing we're going to be doing, people. You know what? I'll see you over in my freighter. OK, I'll see you. OK, there. chums, well, I'm inside of my actual build menu. There's the decal right there. It looks like it might be fine. It is. It is fine, people. Look at that. It is OK. Oh, I didn't notice that before, but it's got a little green ship on the skull's face. Pretty darn nice. I'll stick that there. Chikapow! There we go. Decal placed up in space on my freighter. Let's, um, let's just uh, stick the sun in the sky, people. Let's stick that there and let's see if we can have a better butcher's head with our eye peepers. Yeah, that looks all right, mate. That looks freaking good. All right, well, that's the decal sorted, people. Decal! right oh. Well, you know what? I think I might head on over to my news desk here. Present the news like it's the news. I'll see you on my news desk. Well, how do that jumps? Here I am, sitting at my news desk. I, what I haven't had yet is a sip of my tea. One second, while I have a little sip of my tea. Oh, that's a blinking good cup of tea and a bloody awesome mug. Yes, I sell my own tea. And I've got my own mugs. Yeah, check my video description. Should point you to my about page and there are all my lovely links. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Yummy, yummy, yum, yums. Righto, so first up, on the screen, over here, over here, on this screen here, you can see here the depots, the depots, however you want to pronounce those, updated just the other day. So, yeah, just the other day they updated. Internal branch and experimental public has still done nothing, people. Nothing at all. Right, what have we got on the next tab, though, people? Here we go. Ray Run Sean Murray Watch. I wonder if I can make that a little bit bigger on the old screen here for you, people. Yes, I can. Here you go. So if I scroll on down on the Sean Murray's feed, there's not too much that's been too new here. However, they have been nominated again. Yes, it's an honour to be supported for best community in games. Yes, they've been nominated. Whether they win it is another thing. We'll have to see, people. I don't think it's been announced as yet. But you can see here in the lineup, there's Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Destiny 2, Final Fantasy, and No Man's Sky for best community. Well, that, that could be an interesting one. I mean, I know which I'm part of two of those communities, Cyberpunk and also No Man's Sky. Oh, and Destiny 2. I used to play Destiny 2 quite a lot. But, um, yeah, we actually got playlist in Destiny 2. But there we go. There's that. So that's pretty good news, isn't it? So let me just click back up there and uh, scroll on down a bit more. We've also got, look, 77% all time in the little prairie thing. So that from the rocky start they had to get up to 77% as being positive reviews is pretty darn freaking good, to be honest. So that's good news, heck yes. However, I know that after Waypoint dropped, I um, actually did a review of No Man's Sky. In fact, I put the video up there. You can go and watch that. Now, in that video, I actually rated it around the 75% mark, people. Mainly because Waypoint put in, you know, those boosted slots and all that sort of shenanigans. But not only that, it gave you the game toggle to swap mode on the fly whenever you like. And to be honest, when that first dropped, I, I thought it was moving towards sandbox rather than to gamifying No Man's Sky, which 
It, it was a real thing to get my head around, and to be honest, it really did knock me for six. And a lot of people in the community. Waypoint really was a dividing update from inside the community, and I still don't really know how I feel about it 100% even today, people. Yeah, sign up in the comments, let, you, let us know what you think. Where would you rate No Man's Sky now? Because now, now that I've got quite comfortable with it, I'm going to do a review at the end of the year. I'm going to review the whole of 2023, and where I sit with No Man's Sky now, because it's an ever-evolving game. It's a game that I've done a review for it almost every freaking year, people, so there is that. And then, there you go, they won the Golden Joystick Awards. I've done a whole video on Golden Joystick Awards, where they actually go up and do a little talk. There's nothing too amazing in there, but they do mention about how they do things for the community. Again, I put a video up there. That's my doorbell, I need to go and answer that. One second. Well, I'm back, people, heck yes. We've got one more tab to hit on up. So let's uh, get on over to that tab. Boom! We're over on my community tab. Now, a lot of people on Nintendo Switch hit me up after the last update that improved the rendering inside the Switch, and I've had mixed results. Some people saying it's made a world of difference. No crashes. And then other people saying there's crashes. So anyways, I put out a poll, and you can see the actual results of the poll on the screen here. Let me see if I can zoom that in a bit better. There you are. But you can see there that you know, a fair chunk says that it's far better, but still crashes pretty often. And then another load of people said it's no better at all. And then a small percentage of people have said that it's perfect. So it's, it's a very mixed kettle of fish there. So if you are one of the lucky ones and it is working fine, then great. If it's improved slightly, then great. But if it's not improved at all, then I have no idea what's going on there for you. Uh, maybe retry a, a reinstall. I don't know. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are saying that it's working better. Some are saying that it's now working perfectly. And some are saying it made no change. So it's a bit of an oddity. I don't really know what to make of it. Now, the people that I speak to regularly on Switch have told me that it is better on planet, far better on planet. Um, but what they're finding is if they go to the new dissonance systems, encounter the new Sentinel type, the little purpley Sentinels, the corrupted ones, things can go a little bit juttery. It can start to lag, not crash, but lag. They've also told me that if they're in a Sentinel ship and they're hunting for a new Sentinel ship, like a crash Sentinel ship, that it's likely to crash if they park their ship near to another Sentinel ship. Maybe the Sentinel ships aren't all that well optimised, I don't know, but that's when they're finding crashes. And another time that they're finding crashes is boarding or taking off from their freighter if their full frigate fleet is in nearby vicinity to their freighter. And when I say their full frigate fleet, they haven't got a full frigate fleet, they've got about 10 frigates and they're noticing the crashes. In fact, they say that it starts to crash after you get about five or six frigates, depending on the frigates you've got. If you've got the living frigates, perhaps they're slightly more complex and perhaps there's more time chances of crashing. But yeah, and also they've got mid-range bases on their freighter, a bit like the one that I'm sitting at right now. Nothing overly complex, but something slightly more complex than the average, you know? So I guess it just depends on what you're doing and how you're doing it and how complex your game save is, perhaps, that's causing the crashes inside a Switch. I'm not a technical guru, I don't even own a Switch. I'm going by what people are telling me, people. So I don't want to put out false news, but I also don't want to go and say, Switch is perfect, and then somebody goes and spends a load of money on Switch to find that after about, you know, 100 hours play, it starts crashing every five minutes and they can't play it anymore. So I don't want to say that it's perfect, but I also don't want to say that it's a bag of shite, because I honestly don't know, okay? So I'm just putting it out there, because in the last video I did say Switch is still crashing a lot. But that's the feedback I'm getting, and that's from people that have been playing for some time, and people that I trust inside of the community. So, there are still crashes. I don't know who that was that just walked past, but it was very rude. Anyway, <laughs> until next time, people, thank you for tuning in, and that's all the news I've got for you. Go pick up your decal. It appears that it is working fine, despite what we see inside the Quicksilver store. Oh, and the next things that are coming to the Quicksilver store, I'm going to make myself a bit larger on the screen for this, people. Heck yes, let's just jump on over, and let's just bring up the No Man's Sky Assistant app. Boom, No Man's Sky Assistant app. I'm going into community missions, and as you can see, there's the decals all completed. We've 100%ed those. Next up, we've got an industrial crane arm, which looks pretty awesome. Let me make that a bit bigger. 
Looks like that. Pretty darn freaking sweet, huh? That's going to cost 800 Quicksilver. No, you may, once you've bought the blueprint, though, 25 carbon to make it? It's not bad, is it? It's pretty good. The, the other thing that we're going to get is covered crates. Now, sadly, I've seen this brought into iteration, I think by the structure. I think he brought them into game and showcased them. The actual canopy, the actual cloth, it hasn't got the cloth physics. It looks quite static. But that's also going to cost you 800 Quicksilver. And the last one is this one. Again, it hasn't got the cloth physics. Again, it's 800 Quicksilver. Let me show you what that looks like bigger. It's that. It's like a canopy that's been pegged down over something like barrels or something or tyres. Who freaking knows? But yeah, covered silos. They're silos, apparently. But anyway, we've got those coming next, people. Do you want to know what's after those? Yes, you do. Okay. All right. Well, next up, we've got three more decals coming. One of them is a fluttering decal. This one, which is like you know, one of those flutterbys. That's, they're, they're, these are all going to cost you 400 quicksilver peeps. And the other one is this one. It's a beetly one. That's quite cool. Quite like that one. And next up is this one. Now, a lot of people are probably thinking these decals aren't all that great. Well, for the Flutterby and also the Beetle, I quite like those. And there's a reason why I quite like the Fauna ones. And also maybe even that Planet one. Is, you know, we've got our Wonder Projectors now. Well, at least you can stick a... If you've got a nice beetle that you've found, or one of those flutterbys, at least you can put the projector there with it in, and then maybe put the decal next to it. I think that'll look quite cool. Almost like a little zoo cage or something, with a decal on it, with the actual hologram in it. I think that'll look quite nice. I guess it would. Yes, I was thinking about making an onboard menagerie on my actual freighter at some point, and I think those decals will go a long way towards that. Perhaps. Yes, if we can get some more fauna decals, that'd be lovely. Anyway, people, that's everything I've got for you. Until next time, salute Mondo, and if you haven't already hit those buttons, the subscribe button. Seeing some weird stuff happening with subscribers at the moment, people. I seem to gain 10, lose 9 the next day. It's very weird. And so at the moment, my sub subscriber count almost looks like it's remaining solid. And I've spoke to a few other content creators. They say they're seeing exactly the same thing. All I can say is just make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Sometimes YouTube unsubscribes people. I know that they're doing a thing at the moment where they're also culling a load of old legacy accounts that haven't been used in Google for about two years. So it could be that maybe that's happened. I don't know. Yeah, anyhow, make sure you're subscribed. If you're not, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification, because if there is an update soon, which I kind of feel that there might be, I'm kind of thinking we might see something happening this Friday when it comes to sales happening, depots updating. I think we might see an emoji even perhaps late Friday evening, maybe even close to midnight here in the UK, or if not, maybe on the Monday. And then I'm thinking that maybe on the Tuesday, we might, well, Tuesday or the Wednesday, we might see the update happen. Is what I'm thinking, people. That's my speculation. If it doesn't get thrown out next week into the verse, then we're very close to Decemberance. And I don't think we've had much ever drop in December, people. So I'm getting a little bit nervous now. We're running out of season. We're running out of time. Anyway, people, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.